everybody and welcome back to another episode of the nerd gym report um a lot of news to go over i'm your host pablo and joining me as always is mr brian schultz uh brian how you doing good you just think it's me joining you it's actually one of my 700 variants <laughs> <laughs> maybe the one that won the tour de france i i see you've watched loki <laughs> I know we're we're gonna talk about that in another one, but yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. The, yeah, yeah. The roll call. <laughs> I have one question before we we we, we get into the news, because we have a lot of news to go over. Um, someone brought up a great uh, observation. If he's not able to use his magic, how is he? able to maintain his form being that he's a frost giant and is actually blue that's a great catch that's that's very interesting yeah that's very interesting and another thing observation i think i mentioned this to you i don't know if you had a response to that but if cap going back and staying with peggy was supposed to happen are those his kids? That is so I have a feeling that's somewhere in the Marvel hopper. Um, I actually think one of the news items we're going to talk about tonight, I'm wondering if that's connected to this because clearly if we connect what the discussion between Hulk and Ancient One, which is the first time we saw the sacred timeline on screen, mm -hmm with cap kind of you know going a wall effectively and deciding to live his own life the implication is clearly that him choosing to do that was not only expected but necessary for the timeline to ultimately be restored which to your point means that yeah maybe it is that maybe it is their kids maybe that was supposed to happen um so I, there's, it feels like there's a blank that Marvel is very well aware of there that they intend to fill in. That, that's how I would respond. To that. I hope so. I hope because that's a that's a very very interesting situation there. That I hope that they get into somewhere in the near future. But let's talk about the news. A lot of news to go over. A lot of interesting news. Um, first up. Uh, first look at Sasha Kaye's Supergirl suit in Ezra Miller's The Flash. Uh, this comes to us from the heroic Hollywood. Ezra Miller's The Flash has been hyped up to be one of DC's most exciting projects. Sure, set to explore the multiverse through the iconic Flashpoint storyline, Miller's solo Flash film will also see him team teaming up with other heroes. Details are relatively slim on plot details and how exactly other heroes will interact with the Flash, but we do know we will be suiting up alongside Miller. Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton will both be returning as their respective Batmans, likely as mentors to Barry Allen. As for the new heroes, Sasha Kaye will be joining the DC project as Supergirl. Now, we've had this discussion before about Supergirl. First of all, tell me what you thought of uh, her suit. It looked fine. I mean, I thought, you know, I think that's a very acceptable take, like kind of borrowing some of the comics, maybe adding a little more red, but no, I thought it looked good. I mean, the, the haircut looks fine. I mean, I know they're going for a little different look. I mean, she, it was a piece of that. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Jubilee. You know, Jubilee used to wear kind of yeah. primary colors as well, albeit with yellow as the, but that hair kind of with the way she was kind of coming down. The other thing I, I liked actually, I was just curious about was, they have her on wires in a, in a couple of those shots so they're clearly not green screening everything to do with her effects and so mm -hmm. i just kind of filed that one away for how this is going to look because i don't recall seeing henry cavill wired up a whole heck of a lot in he, he did it but it was against the green screen this Correct. was actually on a set so i, I that, that's one thing i just sort of like just took note of but i don't know what did you what did you think did you mind it no, I didn't mind. I, th I think it looked cool. It reminded me a little bit uh, of Spider-Man's outfit somewhat because of the colors. Um, but her look also, as I was I was doing some research about 
um, the the different Supergirls that have been in the comics, and she is supposed to be uh, in the Injustice world. Um, okay. She's sort of uh, he she is supposed to be. If, and correct me if I'm wrong, and if you folks know more than I do, please correct me in the comment section below. She's supposed to be the the daughter of Superman and Lois Lane. Uh, um, uh, Cyril or uh, so it was a C I R L. Um, so I they're probably going for that take. And and as I said before, this version of Flashpoint, if we look at the Flashpoint movie, the animated film, which was fantastic, one of my favorite of all time, um, he alters somewhat the reality that we know in that. Instead of Bruce Wayne's parents being shot, is his son that gets shot. Instead of uh, Clark Kent landing in Kansas, he lands in some sort of government facility or something. So he alters it a bit. In this one, I think they're using the multiverse, and he probably gets into a multiverse where. Superman and Lois Lane had a kid. I don't know. We don't know what happened to Superman, but perhaps Superman and Lois had a kid and Supergirl is replacing. If you've ever seen the Flashpoint Paradox, she's the one that's being kept in uh, a government facility uh, and replacing Superman's role in that film. So Michael Keaton's role, and we'll get a little bit into that, I don't believe it's just a cameo. I think instead of, again, Flashpoint Paradox, it was Bruce Wayne's father that became Batman. In this one, I think we're in uh, Michael Keaton's universe. That's what it sounds and looks like to me. And by the way, he looks great. Is that. Yeah, the set is that. I mean, they actually went back. I think what I discovered was the building still stands, I guess, and they manipulated the the surroundings. But that is Wayne Manor that was used in the 89 film. So, yeah. What do you think of Michael Keaton and how he looks? He looks fine. I mean, I think he's, you know, it's funny. They... He looked more aged as Vulture, actually. I think they wanted him to look grizzled and kind of weather-beaten. And this one, he looks a little more naturally. Physically capable. Yeah, as, as as... the 89 version of Bruce Wayne would look 30 years later. Yeah. Maybe wish, maybe kind of wish that uh, it was Batman Beyond to be quite honest when I saw him. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people are hoping for some, a situation like that happening. We'll never, who knows if we get a, a Terry McGinnis Easter egg in there. Um, before we move on, one last topic I want to touch on regarding the flashpoint is We don't necessarily know what version of the story that they're going to be going with. Obviously, we've, based on what we've seen so far, we can tell that what we just mentioned, this is probably based in the Michael Keaton world. A few aspects of the Flashpoint definitely won't be adopted because it's just too much with regards to Wonder Woman and Aquaman having this um, war between them and them being the cause of the end of the world or whatever the case may be. Um, Who knows if Barry Allen in that set piece that we saw has his powers. We, we definitely see that he does have the ring, right? I don't know if you saw that. Yes. Flash ring. Yep. Yes. So we don't know if he's the flash in that um, reality that he's gone into. So there's a lot of interesting things to look forward to in this film i'm finding myself a little bit more i wouldn't say excited but definitely more curious to see what this movie is going to be and how it's going to look especially because we're not seeing a lot of green screen which we definitely see in 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 zach snyder's film and it's gonna i don't know if i'm not gonna compare it to chloe zhao's but in terms of looking at a real set um, is definitely in play for this film. Your last thoughts on this? Well, I'm with, the, the key point about storyline is really interesting because we know that this was originally supposed to have Cyborg riding side saddle as a co-lead or a 1A. 
Yeah. And so you know that whatever iteration they're shooting has to be pretty far afield because it's not like a camp. I mean, you, you, you're literally having to rewrite story. And I doubt that it's as simple as dropping Sasha Kaye into Ray Fisher's role and kind of just rolling with all the other component parts. So I think there's some major work retooling that's been done. And to your point, I, I think the, the betting money is probably that this is DC Flashpoint, but loose, more loosely based on it, yeah. maybe, than what they originally might have been gunning for when they thought this was going to be sort of Snyderverse extended. My only hope, although I don't think it'll happen, is... We're not going to see Cyborg, and he was a very pivotal, he had a very pivotal role in the Flashpoint Paradox, and doesn't seem like he's going to have any sort of uh, um, time in this film or appearance in this film or, 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 or be effective in this film because of what happened. That's the only thing that, um, that bothered me about this film, because he played a major role, and, uh, and I'm pretty sure... Michael Keaton's Batman is going to play a major role, although I would have liked to see Jeffrey D. Morgan as as Batman. But let's see what we get, man. It, it, it seems to look good. We'll see what they present to us. Let us know in the comment section below uh, about your excitement about this film. What do you think so far? What storyline you think they're sort of um, leaning towards? Obviously not the Flashpoint Paradox and what we saw there, but what sort of things are, are, are going to be different in, in this film? Next up, James Gunn has spoken to DC and Marvel about a crossover film. Brian, when I read this, man, I was like, let's go into the, the article. Um, this comes to us from comingsoon.net. Uh, director James, G director James Gunn is no stranger to working in the world of comic books, having now directed films, both, uh, in Marvel and DC properties. According to the director, he's even had discussions with studios about a potential crossover brand, uh, a potential cross brand crossover. Speaking on social media, Gunn replied to a fan's tweet asking about the chances of ever seeing the crossover between Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC Extended Universe. Gunn said that he's actually had casual talks with the powers that be at both companies, but doesn't think it's too likely, despite stressing that it isn't impossible. Uh, he says, and I quote, I've casually talked to the powers that be at both Marvel and DC. I would love for it to happen. I don't think it's likely, but I don't think it's an impossibility either. That said, just constantly seeing crossovers and mashups is less enchanting to me than a, than a strong story. Um, I don't think, based on what I've seen in comment sections in, in, in Instagram and on YouTube, nobody really wants this. I certainly don't want it. Brian, I don't know if you want it. To me, when I hear this, it reminds me of Street Fighter. It reminds me of even G.I. Joe, these big ensemble cast of great characters being put in one film and it being a disaster. And that's exactly what this would be. Brian, what were your thoughts when you saw this? My thoughts were James Gunn should make like Homer Simpson and fade into the <laughs> Like, I'm serious. Like, it, you know, this guy was fingernails away from not having a career again, for yeah. better or for worse, right? Yeah. So he not only gets, a rec he becomes a reclamation project at DC and hopefully Suicide Squad is great. He gets his old job back at Marvel to do Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And just take your blessings and enjoy them. Like, this ain't happening. Yeah. It's not, it's not happening. Like, let, let's go. Th I mean, 
we can go through all the the, the the comic book reasons why I don't think it's any happening anytime soon, but like, look at the simplicity of it. One side is going through a merger. It's definitely not happening while that's yeah. going on. Yeah. And the other side is loaded to the gills with new content. Even if they, even if they wanted to entertain this, Kevin Feige's not going to put this top of the priority list versus Hell getting no. phase four, right? And all the shows they got in the hopper. Come on. Like there's no way. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you made a call. I'm sure you had a conversation. Those happen all the time. To me, this is no different than like Zack Snyder tweeting out a picture of Martian Manhunter or his plans for the Green Lantern scene. Like, yeah, a lot yeah. of ideas yeah. occur that never make it to reality. Why even put this out there? I, I was not a fan that like this crossed and I'm just sort of like, you know, James Gunn's been squawking a lot about Suicide Squad. Great. Promote that. I'm excited yeah, yeah, yeah. to see what you can do with that. Promote Peacemaker. I'm excited to see what you can do with that. This, I didn't need it. I kind of just rolled my eyes and moved on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I just, for people who do want it, it's like, and, and he says it himself, he values story. They, 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 they... If you were to do a movie like this, let's say they did a movie like this, this to me would be something I would not be looking forward to because it just, it doesn't make sense in, in, on all different types of levels, right? Because look at the care that they're taking into doing this multiverse situation, right? Where Marvel is taking their time and then giving us explainers in these, in these series. And it's like, by the time we get to the multiverse, we'll be fully... We have PhDs in this and understand the Marvel multiverse. With DC, single all the best part of Loki, single best part of Loki. I am so far into two episodes, amazed at the writing to teach you the multiverse what? on the fly and not make it sound hokey. I'm there with you, Brian. I'm there with you, Brian. Before we move on, did you get a chance to check out Suicide Squad, the trailer? The new trailer? Yes. Does it seem like a similar situation with them being a, uh, getting a Idris Elba's character to to participate in the Suicide Squad using his daughter as a, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a quid pro quo? Yes. Kind of deal? Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. It's like, like, dude, you couldn't find another way? Um I watched the trailer. I'll tell you this, Brian. I I'll be honest. It had its funny moments, but I wasn't laughing because they weren't funny. This is just for me. It's just going to be a, a movie that has a lot of humor, but isn't f actually that funny for me. So again, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he did with this Suicide Squad, but for me, it's just going to be full of jokes that I'm not going to find comical. This will be an interesting test, I think, because I think everything I've seen indicates he really spent a lot of time trying to nail the comics accurate tone and feel and dialogue of Suicide Squad in this movie. I think what remains to be seen is, is that really the version the, the mainstream worldwide audience really, really wants? I think that's the question. Mm -hmm. um, it worked with Guardians, clearly. Like they, they, you know, but this is definitely a little bit different yeah. and people have some history with it. Look, I mean, we can, you know, we can grouse about what happened to David Ayer's cut, but, you know, this was not a box office failure. Like there was no. you know, 700, 800 million of box office behind this. So people did go see it. Yeah. And so I'm curious as to whether they will respond more or understand that what they're being shown this time is actually truer to the comic books or whether they're just going to benchmark it against, you know, Will Smith and say, is it better or worse than that? So I don't know. I, I think that's TBD. I think this will be a hit, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not like locked in that it's going to be a massive hit yet. Yeah. 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 Me neither. Me neither. Let us know in the comment section below what you thought of the, the suicide squad trailer and what you thought of james gunn's idea of this dc marvel crossover is this something that you really want to see honestly i mean if you're a geek and 
you know, and, and, and have read the comic books, those crossover events, they were probably dope, but they didn't do many of them, obviously. Um, but this is something that you would really want to see on screen. And I, I doubt it gets made, ever gets made. But let us know in the comment section below if you would like to see this. Next up, Pattinson for Farrell set for Batman reshoots. So they're doing research, reshoots, Brian, and sometimes usually this can cause a little bit of nervousness in some people. Um, but let's get into the, the article real quick. Uh, this comes to us from Dark Horizons. Robert Pattinson and Colin Farrell will leave, will head to Glasgow, Glasgow next month to do research reshoots for Matt Reeves, the Batman for Warner Brothers Pictures. The Daily Record reports that filming will kick off in Scotland again in mid-July on what is expected to be mainly reshoots and some stunt scenes. The two actors who played Bruce Wayne, Batman, and Oswald Cobblepot, the, the Penguin in the film, are the only names mentioned as being expected back on set. This is the way I look at it, Brian. And looking at it in the editing room, and they said, hmm, I think we can do better. I don't like this shot. I think we can do this, blah, 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 blah. Let's go to reshoot it. We got the money. They're not going to say, what are they going to say? No to us? <laughs> Give us the money and let's do this. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think people should it, relax. This is not actually that unusual, especially for a big budget project. I actually think the scope of this sounds pretty small which would indicate that they probably got most of what they wanted. Yeah. As you said, this is probably pickups for a couple of scenes that they want to do. I wouldn't even, like if people are trying to draw a connection between this and the quality of the film, zero. Don't don't worry about it. For Like I said, I think there's been far more of these than not for yeah. this genre. I certainly am not worried. And I've said it multiple times before, and I'll say it again. This movie, when it comes out in 2022, correct? Yep. It's going to make a 1.5 to $2 billion. I'm, I'm sticking by that number. This is going to be the most anticipated film, superhero film of all time next year. And I'm going to be, listen, the, the pent up demand to go to see a movie is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen when it comes to this movie. Uh, I mean, I can't wait for it. If anything told you uh, when you saw that first Batman trailer for Matt Reeves, everybody was going crazy about it. Everybody. And I'm sure, and we only saw what, 25 minutes, not, not 25 minutes of, but 25 minutes of well, filming 25 percent yes 25 percent of the movie have been shot and they showed us that yeah that says a lot to me this that that shows us there's just so much more we haven't seen and realized yet and i, I and i think it's going to be a massive success a massive success yeah i think we're going to be scaling into kind of bigger and bigger openings i think black widow will clearly or well Fast Nine is kind of doing it, but Black Widow is going to redefine the level for where box office appetite is globally. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we aren't still fully reopened in, you know, like there's been a lot of progress in Europe. We're not fully there in Asia. There's definitely locations that are not going to be full thrusters for, for this open. And so mm -hmm. I think as you get through, you know, Black Widow, uh, Shang-Chi, you get to Eternals, you get to Spider-Man. I think by the time we get to Spider-Man in December and then Batman is, I believe it's in the first quarter next year. I don't think it's a summer movie, if I remember. I think it's actually like February or March. That's where I think you're going to be pretty much reloaded in terms of everyone being able to go to a theater, theaters not having restrictions. And uh, I also think, you know, Warner Brothers, especially with the merger is going to have to stick by their word, which is they're only going to do simultaneous streaming for this calendar year, which means this movie is not going to have, you ain't going to be able to watch this movie on HBO Max. <laughs> You're going to have to go pay for it. Hell in the theater. And I'm going to pay for it twice if yeah. I can. <laughs> um, let us know in the comment section below. Are you worried about this reshoots thing that's happening with the Batman? Um, if I were you, I wouldn't be worried. Let us know in the comment section below. 
Next up, according to Kevin Feige, Black Widow might not be the MCU's only prequel. This comes to us from IndieWire. Uh, death is rarely the end of, for any comic book character story, such is the case with the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, whose backstory will be fleshed out in Disney's upcoming feature film following the character's death in 2019's Avengers Endgame. Marvel Entertainment Chief Creative Officer Kevin Feige discussed the Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson-led Black Widow, which will premiere in theaters and on Disney Plus on July 9th. I have my tickets. I believe you have yours. I haven't bought them yet, actually. Really? Oh, well, I'm going, but I haven't bought them yet. So, yeah, so many theaters right around me, though. <laughs> I don't have the competition that you do. So. Got it, got it, got it. All right. And the possibility of other Marvel Cinematic characters getting their own prequel film and spin offs during a recent press conference um, that, that Kevin Feige was on. He said, and I quote, certainly this film and, it's, and this story is a particular case for Natasha, Feige said. Uh, but the notion of exploring the past, present, and future of the MCU is certainly in the cards for all of our characters. I don't know about all, but this particular story of this part uh, particular cast is very personal, very specific to Natasha. I Let's think about this for a second. Natasha's getting her prequel. If we think about all the characters in the MCU, whom haven't we gotten an origin story for? Probably Hawkeye, I would say. W will we get one? I doubt it. No, I think he's getting his series in his hand. Yeah, that's, that's and that's, his... yeah, yeah, that's that's it for him. Um, but going forward, as they introduce new characters in these various other films, a depending on how popular they are with the fans. Um, and B, depending on how they're introduced in these other films, will warrant possibly an origin film. Let's say, for example, if Namor pops up in Black Panther, you think we're not going to get an origin film from him? Depending on the rights, right? If we got him, most likely we'll go into that origin film. So certainly he's not, um, speculating speculating whether or not he, they'll do it he's saying that they will do it but it all depends on how these characters get introduced um and i guess the popularity of these characters as well what are your thoughts well this is where i wonder if the fill in the blank for steve rogers might actually qualify because we know that we know that Chris Evans has talked to Marvel about some other unnamed project that is not ground that he's covered before. I think you and I had speculated he's more likely to be a scroll. Um, but I guess if you wanted a way to actually have him be Steve Rogers one more time, it would be his journey through the timeline leading to the last scene of Endgame, which would technically yeah. be a prequel to what you've seen, um, other than, I guess, First Avenger. Uh, but would actually potentially be an interesting adventure. And I think there would be box office for that. I can't think of anyone else in the original generation of Avengers yeah. who either needs this or where it makes sense. Like it's not Downey, like we already saw that. It's not Thor, we already saw that. Uh, I, I mean, young Thor, I, I, mean, I, I don't think that would be awesome. Um, you know, Ruffalo wasn't the Hulk, but we kind of got the Hulk through Norton. So I don't know that there's ground to really cover there. Yeah. Renner, you mentioned, doesn't make a lot of sense. Early days of the Guardians doesn't really check the box for me. I think it's going to be these these next yeah, few phases. We got it. One division, yeah. we got it. Like we've got, you know, we pretty much have everyone else covered. So I think you're right. It's probably got to be newer characters or second or supporting characters who hit it big like loki who then they're like we can stand alone with this character and go backwards i think that's the other thing to consider is the loki model as yeah. it becomes you know becomes a thing today is tuesday i can't wait for tomorrow well the showrunner i mean waldron's been telling you that like episode three is where it all kind of blows up so in some ways i think if we put our 
we're gonna kind of put a review of two and three together, I think that might actually work better because he's yeah. been promising that one and two was kind of the tee up. Yeah, so. definitely. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below which origin film would you like to see, and where do you think these prequels will apply in terms of um, ongoing characters that may be introduced into the MCU. Because uh, we've already gotten our sort of understanding of the current characters we already know. And the only one that was probably missing is Black Widow, because when she was in, she, she you know, she was the Black Widow when she first got introduced. We saw little pieces of her origin in the Age of Ultron. Um, but, you know, we got to know her in various films and she's the only one pretty much other than Jerry Renner. And, he, and again, he's getting his own show. Um, where we haven't seen um, the origin, the real origin of, of Black Widow and, and those missing pieces, I guess, and, because this takes place um, between Civil War and Infinity War, correct? Yes, correct. Actually, yes. I should add the one other character who's, you know, getting more, who has his, who has a show coming out, but I guess you could basically mind his history forever is nick fury that'd be the other one and i don't yeah. necessarily i don't necessarily mean de-aging sam jackson i mean like an actual recast to a young nick fury with a young robert redford alexander pierce like those days maybe there's a spy show in there i i see that probably more like a disney plus series yeah no, no I, that you're right that doesn't strike me as a movie yeah but yeah who knows man who knows uh, let us know in the comment section below what you think of uh, the possible characters that they might introduce as a, their own as a prequel to um, for that that character. Next up, Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige's cryptic tease for WandaVision season two has me. Well, this is from the this comes to us from Cineblend uh, from Dirk LeBay. LeBay. Uh, even more excited for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Kevin Feige recently appeared at a virtual Palais Dialogue session as he was asked by an audience member if he saw a second season of WandaVision in the cards or if we should expect an evolution of the storyline in different capacities. While he didn't address the first part of the question directly, in response... Uh, be a deadline, he confirmed that an evolution of the story was inevitable, according to Feige. And I quote, yes to an evolution of storyline, probably and inevitably in many different capacity, capacities. Uh, we already knew that Wanda Maxwell would be a major part of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Riders. You guys can read the, uh, the, the, the rest of that article. But to me, Brian, reading this and the possibilities of a season two i don't know yet the only reason for a season two i suspect would be her pursuit of vision and finding out what where that vision is or whatever the case may be right we never know but her storyline certainly doesn't uh end in dr strange too i think they're setting her up for that classic moment of no more mutants that's where we're gonna see, we're gonna see her throughout um, whatever phases that they're gonna be introduced, especially with the X Men, and we're gonna see no more mutants. I don't know how that transpires, but certainly, uh, Wanda season one and the events that happened in Doctor Strange two aren't the end of Wanda. What are your thoughts? Well, no more mutants seems a little more appropriate for a film than than a show. Yeah, that's a and like moment in, yeah yeah you know so I, I think that's probably more likely there yeah look i mean if you're kevin feige why close the door on it there was a pretty big audience for this you know it wasn't a perfect show but it was a very well discussed and generally well received show with some real high points why commit either way i mean there's no rush here i mean she's yeah. going to be on screen in the movie that's going to tie up some loose ends and probably open up a bunch more uh, as you said, it works her toward the X-Men universe. That creates other possibilities. I mean, 
you could call it WandaVision season two years from now and have it be part of the X verse if you want. Like, I, there's there's unlimited possibilities. Why why limit yourself at this point in time? I but I don't think it will be rushed. I don't see yeah. this as a 2023 event. Even if it does happen, I think it's down the road. Yeah, definitely. Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, a, season, a, a second season of WandaVision and when you think it'll come? Um, again, the only reasonable, based on what events have occurred thus far, is that we'll see a season two where Vision is involved and sort of perhaps close the chapter on that. I don't know. Um, and perhaps that even leading into some of the other um, mutants oriented stuff that we're going to be getting soon as well. But let us know in the comment section below uh, your thoughts on that. And please do comment because we, we do read them um, and it does help out the channel. Next up, and it's going to be quick, but because I and we ha and I had to talk about it. Because this is this is how you do things. This is how you respond. You don't have to lie, Craig. You don't have to lie. Kang. Kang actor Jonathan Majors ad addresses Loki cameo rumors. And I'm not even going to read the article. He simply says, I have no idea what you're talking about. Brian. That is a true professional right there. <laughs> what are your thoughts, right? What are your thoughts about that? Oh, look, he's a timekeeper. So <laughs> what do you expect him to say, man? He's like, why? There were, there was an art, there was an interview done once where Charlie Cox was um, asked about his participation in the MCU. And listening to him, man, is like if he, like, if you listen to him in that interview and he was being accused of something, you would think he's guilty. The way he was talking, the way he was sidestepping and not ask, um, answering directly and just, you know, going around the question. I act, you know, he, but this guy, he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he kept it moving. That's how you do things. Instead of lying, Garfield, about whether or not you're going to be in it. And, I'll, and I'm not going to say I know, but I've heard that, you, that, that we'll talk about it in our Spider-Man 3 uh, conversation. I don't so want do to. So do you think Jonathan Majors is in this show? Um... I don't know. I don't necessarily think. Because think about this for a second. If he is, I would suspect he will make an appearance similar to what Thanos did in the first Avengers. Agreed. I was just about to say that. Agreed. Outside of that, I don't see him playing a major part or having an extended appearance in this series if because you got to think about this if he's supposed to be showing up in, in quantum mania um in atman 3 and when does that come out do you know i believe that's also a 2022 film because i think they're i know like michelle pfeiffer has been kind of tweeting out videos of her getting ready working out and getting ready to be so that usually suggests there's Film, probably filming later this year going for like later next year I think it's on the 2022 schedule calendar not 2023 so who knows because uh, he's definitely the villain in that film again I wouldn't suspect him to be play a major role in this series but as a tease similar to what Daniel because I think that should be their 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 MO. That should be their MO of introducing these characters. Like Doom, I wouldn't want Doom to show up in the beginning of a series. Are you kidding me? I want that brother 
to be around as long as Loki has been around. That's what I would like. So if he does show up, I hope it's that. And if he doesn't show up, I'm fine with it. I'm with you. I think if he shows up as an actual role, it would detract from the direction this show is going in. Because we've been given the tease of Loki has identified the timekeepers as the villains, effectively, in his world now. Yeah. So he's now targeting them, saying, I want to overthrow them. I want to do my chaos thing and basically wreck this order that they're creating, which I think is boring. Mm -hmm. That's not a season one goal right that that's a global <laughs> multiverse goal so to me we already know there's a loki season two what makes more sense to me is you tease this role of timekeeper at most you have kang show up as the the stinger at after the season finale he then gets his full intro in ant-man 3 and now if you come back to season two, I wouldn't even make him the lead villain of the TV show. But if you want him to be kind of pulling strings and popping up and kind of orchestrating now as an actual character, as Loki kind of continues his quest to overthrow the timekeepers, great, we're set up. That's what makes a lot more sense to me than sticking him into episode four yeah. of this show and being like, oh, just kidding, the deviant, uh, the variant is not, the villain it's this guy who we just stuck in here midway through the season uh, i don't yeah. see that yeah i mean and we'll get into it in our, in our discussion of loki but this series has done a good job of feeding us a lot of information that again is is information that we can comprehend and not go crazy and be confused as to this and that they've done a good job in in, in, in telling us that story and 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 we're, what, four more episodes and it's over, right? That's what and I mean. It's I mean, Look at what happened in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, there's only so much room for character development. And that is a huge character. <laughs> Don't put him in episode three and four and be like, oh, we got two, three episodes to sort him out. That's... Yeah, exactly. This show does not seem dumb enough to do that. So. Exactly. So, yeah, let us know in the comment section below, man. Jonathan Majors, a pro. And, and and just, you know, not causing any controversy, not, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, keep it moving. That's the way you got to do it. Um, and our final uh, topic, and I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about this, Brian. Steven Spielberg's production company signs a deal with Netflix. This comes to us from CNN, a big dog. Uh, Steven, Steven Spielberg is partnering with Netflix. Getting getting Hollywood's premier director represents a major coup for the streaming service. Amblin Partners, the film and TV production studio led by the blockbuster director, announced a partnership with the streaming company Monday that will include multiple new features, films per year for the service, according to two companies. Um, Spielberg chairman of Amblin said in a statement that storytelling will forever be at the center of everything we do and that we and that he started this uh, and that when he just started discussing a partnership with Ted Sarandis Netflix co-CEO and chief content officer it was abundantly clear that we had an amazing opportunity to tell new stories together and reach audiences in new ways and this is this is where it gets interesting for me uh the announcement is also notable because Spielberg has been critical of streaming in the past. For example, Spielberg told, told ITV News in 2018 that once you commit to a television format, you're a TV movie. Now, many people took that as a sort of, I guess, novice uh, a statement with regards to TV films and the theatrical films which he's been doing for years and that's something that he wasn't you know thinking about doing uh but how times have changed um so i want people to find their entertainment in any now he says i want people to find their entertainment in any form or fashion that suits them 
Spielberg told the New York Times in 2019, big screen and small screen, what really matters to me is a great story and everyone should have access to great stories. Brian, do you think, I don't know how long this has been in the making, but I'm quite certain that the announcements and the money that has been thrown around for talent, the, mo the money that has been thrown around for um, other studios, to buy other studios, to buy the rights to prequels, all this money being thrown around. And, and given the fact, as you've stated before, the environment in terms of theatrical releases and that these are more event-driven sort of uh, uh, um, releases, big events, spectacles, you know, would North Co no, no Country for Old Men do well in these times? And these other great films, but would they do well in these times? Do you think any of that had to do with his decision in going over to something two years ago he said he probably wouldn't even participate in? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, first off, they're they're getting act the deal is with Amblin Entertainment. Uh, so that's his company. Don't confuse that with he's now going to personally direct, you know, a whole bunch of movies for Netflix. That's not really what the deal is. He's not at that stage of his career. He's sort of in the he's in the latter stages of exploration. You know, he's doing West Side Story adaptation. He's doing this like semi autobiographical adaptation that's of his childhood, which sounds kind of weird, <laughs> honestly. But, you know, so this is not the Steven Spielberg that did Jaws and Raiders of the Lost Ark and and those and those and Jurassic Park like those days are probably not what you're getting not to say he would never direct the film personally but this is more for the production company which I think has a wider scope but I think the other thing that probably got his attention and I think is when we talk about the eventizing is what Netflix did with Army of the Dead so Netflix has clearly been test driving bit by bit and they did it with some of their awards fair like Roma previously. They, they, they are test driving, how does a theater connect to the Netflix model? They put Army of the Dead in theaters exclusively before they streamed it, only for like a week, mm -hmm. but they did it. Guarantee you are gonna see more experimentation by them. Uh, I believe they actually do own some theaters. I've been pushing for this that I think big streaming services ought to own some physical facilities because it gives them a way to exclusively show some of the content that maybe starts to get a buzz like think about it like if you have a show that goes viral effectively or a film like extraction great example right that's a sh film that got an audience during the pandemic everyone's talking about it who's to say that like six weeks after it's been buzzing around Netflix if you own some theaters throw it on the big screen you telling me people some people won't want to go see it or see it again in that format yeah and There's experience it with other people yeah yeah i don't think it's been fleshed out and finalized and i think part of why steven spielberg is willing to do this is that there is some theatrical outlet for certain projects at amlin that are bigger events and makes sense for that so you know it, it goes back to what we said like if you're not buying ip you're buying talent and you're buying sort of the, the mental acuity and the creativeness, uh, the creativity of certain people and certain companies. And this is another variant of that. Like I said, he's not you're not really getting all of Spielberg himself in his prime. You're kind of getting the company and the legacy he's created and the people around him. But, you know, there's IP there. Those people yeah. will create for you. So a big deal. Like there's a reason why that caught a lot of people's attention. A big deal. Yeah. The streaming wars... I would say they've begun, but it's far from over, far from over. Uh, and the beneficiaries of all this is is us, the fans, and you know people who want content and good content. Uh, we can only be glad that this is happening um, now. We'll be able to see. Uh, um, a lot of the the new stuff that's going to be coming out, and uh, I'm for one, I'm looking forward to 
all this content that's going to be coming out, man. It's just, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just it's amazing. Golden age. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 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 Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's our jo- show for today. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us once again. I'm Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me as always, Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, any last words? I will be hiding in a chaos apocalypse for the next week. <laughs> this episode, what a, what a hilarious idea. Anyway, enjoy the show. It's been fun. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once again, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell and share with other people who enjoy talking and discussing about uh, uh, this genre that we we certainly love and, and love to talk about and speculate. I mean, we can help but speculate and theorize on what's next because it's obviously to me that for, for, for DC, for Marvel, this isn't uh, a one-time sort of thing. Marvel has certainly built this thing to last. Um, who knows how long this will continue as actors get older uh, and, and new storylines arrive and, and new people that take over. Uh, this is certainly a bus- business in my in my, in my eyes with regards to MCU and how they've sort of planned this whole thing out is built to last. Um, I'm hoping that DC gets on the ball and makes uh, some of these storylines that we loved in the past in, in the comic books. They, they bring those to life and, and, and get their stuff together. And I'm also looking forward to new studios adopting great storylines like for example 100 bullets is one of my favorite uh, uh comic book storylines and i would and i, I could have sworn a long time ago that showtime was on board to do this so hopefully um a lot more stories uh, get done i believe uh sandman isn't that supposed to get done Be, yeah uh, it's getting done it's, it's getting produced yeah. is that on netflix yes oh, yeah yeah so a lot of stuff is coming man and yeah and and we're here just to discuss all that stuff uh we're not here just to give you news and and just keep you up to date but sort of understand what's going on and speculate on what is the mind um or thinking behind the decision making that are decision making that is going on in, in, with these properties and and we and we thank you guys for joining us and and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.